Good morning and welcome to AXA Coral Live, uh, beaming to you from the Karmabi Research Station in Curaçao. I'm very happy to be joined for this Ask Me Anything session by Kaur, who um, runs the Education Centre here at Karmabi. True. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome in our Education Centre. Um, so, Kaur, together I think we're going to try and answer over the next 40 minutes or so uh, as many questions as possible. Perfect. Um, today has been all about the coral ecosystem. On Monday we had the coral polyp, so we're getting a bit broader yeah. now. Uh, we have had a live investigation and um, we have um, also had an, uh, a tour around the wet lab um, with Mark just now and now we're just going to try and get through as many questions as possible. We have schools joining us from Nigeria, um, the United Kingdom, the USA, India and Canada. Perfect. Um, so just before we start the questions, I'm just going to give a few shout-outs to welcome our, our classes who are, who, are, who are joining us. We've got Year 2 from Crossfield School, uh, Reading um, in the UK. We've got Mrs. R welcome. Uh, Mrs. Ramaj's class at Union Point um, Academy in Union, Kentucky uh, in the States. Great to have you with us. Uh, class 7B from Boulder Academy. In I, <laughs> I think Ellie might, might know people um, there. Um, so great to have you um, with us. Um, and we have Peter's Colony Elementary um, in the Colony, Texas, USA. So, wow, we're going to start Big off. audience. It's a great audience, and I think we've got more, more online. Um, I can see we've probably got a dozen schools um, in total. Um, but going through the pre submitted questions first, it's year two, so this is sort of... I'm um, trying to work out sort of eight, nine, nine, sort of eight, nine year olds that, that kind of age. Um, so Hashra would like to know, um, what do you like most um, about the oceans? Oh, <laughs> the small the, question to start off with. The most difficult question, because it's it's all together. You know, it's all the animals, all the plants, all living creatures in the ocean living together. I think that's the most fascinating thing of the ocean. Wow, amazing. And we've got here through from Shornak, and I know you've got some things lined up for us, so we'll, we'll, we'll get through some of these and then we'll have a, I'll have a few questions here. I'm um, Shornak would like to know what percentage of the ocean is coral? Oh, only 1 or 2% of all surface of the water is coral. So it's a very small, but very important. Wow, so just... just and that's how vulnerable it is. Yeah. Because it's... Only a couple of per percent. Less than 2% yeah, of the ocean guess. is coral. Wow. Um, now, this Ella would like to know, and this might be a question we're not allowed to answer. No. How does coral feel when you touch it? Oh, don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> don't. <laughs> well, most people know corals. You, you see. We're this just going to get the behind us? camera on, or we can zoom in. Yep. Yeah. Most people know coral like this, when they see it on the beach, but then it's dead. So it feels like rock. It is rock, actually. But living coral, don't touch it. But it's, it's only two, three millimeters thick, living. The, the rest is dead inside. Only the surface is living. It's a bit slimy because there are little, little... Uh, animals, but if you touch them, well, they, they'll die because they're so small. So it feels slimy, but don't try. <laughs> um, so here's, here's a question coming in. Um, so we, we've, we've had, what does it feel like? Um, and um, Freya would like to know, um, does coral smell? Well, you're under the water. So living coral... It's hard to smell because our senses aren't very, how do you call it? We've got a mask underwater as well. Yeah, which is so I'm not really sure. And if, if, if it's brought up, it smells a bit dirty because it's dying. So, But I don't know if coral smells under the water. We, we had a coral smell conversation yesterday yeah. with, with a couple of the sponge guys in René as well. and, and, and the sort of, there was a feeling that uh, coral smelt like um, dimethyl, like a sort of hospital sort of disinfectant. Okay, okay. Sort of like sweet acrid smell and also a bit like the herb thyme, um, quite sort of pungent. So 
There, there, there must be animals in the sea, in the ocean, who can smell because their senses are more and more much better than, than ours. So. And smell is probably incredibly important. Um, and I think science research for is... For communication. For, for communication, knowing where to settle these, these chemical signals yeah. in the water. And we're probably only just beginning to um, find out how important yeah. smell is in the ocean. And finding out how bad our smell is, actually. <laughs> All the different chemicals that we're adding that confuse. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, and just fr um, from Poppy, this is um, in, in the UK, there's been a lot in the news and I can see a shark behind us filled with plastic rubbish. How much plastic have you seen um, on, on the ocean? Well, the most difficult thing is most plastic you don't see. Okay. We only see the big things and this, the things you see on, on YouTube and, and, and pictures, but actually most of the plastics are so small, the microplastics, we cannot see them. So, yeah, that's a problem. We only understand only a, a little of it, but uh, I don't know. We all know the plastic soup, the, the very big, big, um, how do you call them? The, sort of the garbage. To the yeah, the, the garbage dryers. things in different oceans. Yeah. Um, but al always you see plastic on the shore, in the water, on the land. And people don't throw plastic away on purpose. They don't walk to the ocean and throw plastic in it. Yeah. But if you throw away a plastic cup or whatever on the land, it always ends up in the ocean. If you're not aware of it, but it does. By wind or by rain or... so. The ocean is filled with plastic. Oh, So I think what we're going to do is that in between each school, I know you've set up some things for us really kindly. So yeah. Should we do a sort of like a, a school set of questions and then we'll have a, have a look at something? Perfect. And then we'll get to the next school. So, so, yeah. so take us away. What, what have you got set up for us today, Paul? Uh, we here have some microscopes. And it's hard to see through the camera on this microscope, but here we have a digital, digital one, and here you can see some skin of shark. And, oh, can the camera see it? Yeah. And if you touch the skin of the shark, it feels like a little like sandpaper. It's a bit rough. And the amazing thing is, on this little piece of skin, we can see the species of the shark. Every species has a different form of the little, how do we call them in English? The little sort of bumps. Scales. Bumps, scales. yeah, scales. And they are a bit, sorry. They are like this shape, if you look closer. And that's from a hammerhead. So someone killed a hammerhead, but they are very, very rare. And <sighs> why? So the skin of the shark, a hammerhead in this case. You also can see on the microscope the beauty of corals. They look like stone, but if you watch very closely, and zoom in on them, you can see all very little, little and every small every little small thing you see on the microscope there was one little coral animal polyp in it, living in it so it's beautiful to see, even under the microscope. But of course, this is dead coral. So cool. just, just, just to, to go over that, so that in each of those tiny, like sort of star-like yeah. shapes, that's the little hole that the coral animal lives in. And it's a sort of like a, almost like an anemone or a jellyfish yeah, type true, sort of animal. True. Yeah, living together with very small plants, algae, mm -hmm. and they live together, symbiosis they call it. Okay. 
and um, they need each other. The algae needs the animal, and the animal needs the little plants, the algae. Amazing. And um, thank you so much for showing that. And we'll, we'll have a look at some of the other yeah. amazing exhibits in a little bit, which you have um, a, a, around the education centre here. Um, but for now, we've got um, from Point Academy in Union, Kentucky. It seems like an amazing job you have here doing an yeah, education centre in Curacao. Did, did you study marine biology or oceanography at college? No, I studied in the Netherlands, in Europe, and I studied biotechnology. Oh, wow. So it's more medical biology, life science, and then bec I became a teacher, high school teacher. Did you? I still am, here in the local high school. Oh, right. And besides that, um, I'm here at the education center, Karmabi. So, so ed edu education and, and being a qualified teacher can take you to lots of exciting yeah, true, places. Yeah, true, true. And it's amazing here because you get to know a lot of students. They're doing PhD, they're doing research on corals. So it's a beautiful place to be here. Amazing. So maybe a, a few teachers who are watching with their classes may be <laughs> a little bit jealous. Um, from my side, I, I actually studied history um, at college and um, came into working with um, the marine world through joining a lot of science expeditions as a, as a communicator, yeah. as a as sort of like a helping out with the science um, and satellite communications from remote places and then more and more <coughs> getting absolutely fascinated by it. Yeah. As you say, it's working closely with marine researchers is, is a real treat of a way to true, sort of get true. your oceanography yeah. um, education. And that's why we want to to tell our students, our children, about the beauty of, of nature on land, in the ocean. Because if you know how beautiful it is, you want to protect it. So yes. that's... Love before loss. Yeah, true. Um, this is from, from Boulder Academy in Isleworth. Um, what exotic marine animals have you seen and what was your reaction to them? Um, they're all exotic. You know, we have here barracudas, uh, we have the, all the big, the big fish, the, the mu murines, how do you call them in, in English? Murines in Dutch? Um, um, my, my the big Dutch snake, sna snail-like uh, eels. eels uh, Murray eels. Murray eels, yeah. There uh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, rays, uh, it's, it's all, all beautiful. I don't have one, you know, it's... How tiny or how big the, the, the creatures are there all. I mean, I've just got this very big soft spot for Christmas tree worms. They're, they're so cute, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Christmas tree worms, uh, um, they burrow into a coral or, or a sort of hard surface and then have the, the little sort of feeding feelers coming out, which yeah. are like Christmas trees. Yeah, true. And if they get bitten off, they regrow again. True. So and if you try to touch them... Yeah, they disappear back yeah. into the... Yeah, if, 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 you're, if you're not... Yeah. I like squids. Yeah. From some reason, I don't know why, but. And we've got good qu squid species here. Yeah. You also see them on the wall over there. I don't know if you can see it as a picture. Amazing. So we're going to go now from um, Salman. Uh, Damien um, would like to know, and I think this is um, quite an interesting question, um, and there's a lot we can talk about with it. What has been the most dangerous creature? you have been in the water with? Oh, I think most people think a shark. Yeah. I've seen sharks for real, and people are very scared about that, but actually they're, they're not human either, eating humans. So I don't have met very scary creatures under the water, actually. If you know their behavior and, and if you know how to uh, what they eat and, and their, their position in the ecosystem. You don't have to be afraid for them. See, my, my scariest ones have been sea snakes um, on the reef flats um, and p maybe stepping on them. Yeah, or the spiky, um, how do we call them? The uh, urchins. The or the yeah, the urchins. urchins. Yep. So, but they're not very, how do we call it? It's not. They don't look very, you know, with, with scary, you think about big, sharks, big and sharks and yeah, and big things teeth like and everything yeah. else. But the actual things are things you might step on, yeah, the sea snakes, true. 
we, we were in Timor Leste, the the so had stonefish here. So, 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 so the crocodiles were the big one we we had, which was the, they 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 take people, and yeah. for me, box jellyfish. When you oh were, yeah, you, the, which are you know really dangerous, but yeah. you know this big, true. Um, with yeah. Long so, uh, how you know this whole thing about sharks are going to eat you alive? What what's what's happening here? What's going on with our with our fear of sharks? It's I think it's partly because of all the the movies. Now you have the new mu movie, the Meg, the Megalodon movie, okay. and it's again like Jaws, the old movie, like do 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 and. <laughs> But sharks aren't like that, and people are afraid of them, and think, oh well, the less sharks there are, the, the better it is, because I'm scared, so get rid of them, and I don't care if they exti get extinct. But they, they have to understand they're part of the ecosystem. And, and very important part. And very important parts. They're a top predator, as we call it, so they are in the top of the, the food chain, and they eat they eat uh, the, the uh, fish were sick or old or you know they keep our ecosystem healthy the coral reefs and um what i've got here is is this going on from that so the how, how many just to put it in perspective how many um people die in shark attacks each year because people think it's probably hundreds or, or thousands four or five a year and not here on curacao in the, in the whole world wow so people are scared of sharks but mosquitoes yeah they kill half a million people a year or something. And we are not scared of mosquitoes. A little bit. A little bit, <laughs> only a little bit. <laughs> so only for attack, uh, attacks, and mostly they're, you know, it, it's not on purpose. Yeah. They think you are a big uh, a turtle, or they think you're a, a I don't know what a they think. Yeah, instance. a seal yeah. or something by the shape, yeah, if you look on. up. But yeah. it's. And they don't like uh, the, then, the, the yeah. taste of our meat. And then from the other way around, what, I mean, what kind of numbers of, of sharks are people killing on, a, on an annual basis? Well, there are different figures, but we think there are hundreds of million sharks a year. Hundred million. Hundred million sharks a year. And most of them only for finning. So they cut off the fin for shark fin soup. And the rest of the shark isn't very economically interesting, and people don't like shark meats, so they throw away the the, oh. the shark while they well while he is alive. Oh. So, but he can't swim anymore because his fin is gone, so he's dying slowly. One hundred million a year. One hundred million. That's um, wow. Um, I know because <laughs> even <laughs> I heard yesterday or something a million sharks on the Galapagos Islands a year. The Galapagos, the most beautiful place on earth, I guess, or, you know, all, it's amazing place. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll try and change, change the, um, is the mood again. And there are a couple of more questions um, <laughs> from Boulder Academy, but is there something else oh. that we can, we can go and have a, a nice look at to sort of switch up the mood from, yeah, from, sure. from, 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 from um, the awful sort of <laughs> decimate, well not even decimation, just destruction of the yeah. um, shark population. Come on down into the Kamabi Education Centre. Let yeah. me come behind you, Ellie. So if you follow Cora, I'll make you sure we don't trip over leads and everything. Here you see the skull of a dolphin, for example. And as you see, it's bony because dolphins are mammals. So they have a bony skeleton. And you rarely find skeletons of sharks because it's a fish, so no bones in it. Um, here you see an example of the lionfish. You have a lot of problems here on Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, actually the whole Caribbean with a lionfish. It's, uh, yeah, he's not, he has no enemies here. Um, it's not local, so there are no predators eating it, and it's eating a lot of fish, and it's a big problem here. It looks beautiful, but an animal what, what doesn't, you know, it, it's not supposed to be here, so it's quite a problem now in our, uh, our waters. We always always think of uh, animals, but the plants 
here you see our mangroves. Um, they're very important for marine life, for the coral ecosystem, because a lot of small fish grow up in the mangroves. And if they're big enough, they go to the open sea, to the corals, coral ecosystem. So if we take away the mangroves, okay. we take away our new, how do you call it? Uh, uh, yeah. It's they're like the, yeah. The nursery. The kindergarten. nursery, the nursery. That's the most, I think that's the word, the nursery. And on this, this island, we, we also take away a lot of mangroves because people want to live near the ocean and want to have the view of the ocean. But we have to protect them also, not only the animals. Amazing. I come, come around again, and we'll, we'll carry on with the, uh, the Boulder Academy questions. Um, cool. are, are humans the only reason the fish population is going down? And that's from, from Hannah. Um, I think we have two, two things. The local people who are fishing and take away fish, and globally, the, the problems we have with global warming and um, the temperature of the seawater, things like that. But I think it's mainly our human impact, local and global. So o o overfishing is, is, overfishing, a, is yeah. a big, big, big issue. Yeah. Um, wow. Um, so sorry, sorry, not only too many positives. But <laughs> let, let's come on to the more positives. Yeah. Which is that people f people f um, don't often realise how valuable the coral reef ecosystem is is to us, and perhaps I think it's the most valuable um, per hectare yeah, ecosystem true. on the planet, about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year um, per hectare, and I think that that's working out to um, billions a year, and I think it's even getting up to uh, nearly a trillion dollars a year of the value mm -hmm. that it gives us. And this question coming in is, is, it's about coral having any health benefits or medicines, but maybe we could widen that to what kind of sort of, what might we find on the reef, what chemicals might we find on the reef that could help humanity? And again, that's from, from Hannah. Well, the corals are animals and they can't run away or walk away. They, they don't have feet, so they have to protect them with, with uh, molecules, with, 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 um, um, so chemicals, with and chemicals yeah. to protect them. And we found also here on Kormabi um, some chem chemicals in them who are very, you know, they can be used in our medicine uh, for uh, treatment of cancer, treatment of other illnesses. So there are uh, chemicals found in corals who are very yeah, promising. And sponges as well. So, so and the sponges, sponges yeah. also. So, yeah. So, so it's not just about somewhere beautiful to come and see, actually. No, no. We have, we have a great income as a uh, small island for the corals. You know, the tourism, people come here to dive, to have fun under, in the water, under the water. Uh, the coral protect us from uh, storms and, and uh, heavy, um, heavy winds. So corals are important. Amazing. Besides, they are beautiful. They are beautiful, yes. Um, so coming down now, we've got um, uh, we've got a shout out to Al Hadi students from Houston, Texas, uh, to Mariuka um, who's joining us from Glasgow, um, and now just a, f a few more questions. Um, we've got um, Nuzat um, Danji um, was asking, well, how long have 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 either of us been a marine biologist, and was saying actually we're more on yeah. the communication side. Sure. Um, of, of this, so teacher biology and science. Yeah. Teacher biology and science. I'm sort of like. I'm a not a scientist. No, no. So, so if you speaking to scientists, either we, we watch online or we'll archive it. Um, but the, the interview we had um, with Dr. Mark Vermey, and then we've also he's we have him again this afternoon. So that's in about th three hours' time. Um, the, the team in London can put the exact timing of that for you um, online. So, so to speak to a practicing marine biologist. We'll have that for you later today. It's also cool. Um, so here we go from our, our Hardy students. Um, do you have a favorite coral animal? And that's from Kofi. No, actually, I don't. You don't? No. Nothing, no, 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 no one. I really like that one. Because I know a lot of people like sea slugs, like the little ones. OK, OK. No, I don't have a favorite. No. OK. Um, what do you think is the most disgusting coral animal? And I know 
for me what I think the most disgusting one is. Disgusting? What's yours? Sea cucumber, because of its defense mechanism. That's true. That's so true. Should, we, should we share, should we share yeah. with, the, with the students? I'll, I'll let you tell students how a sea cucumber scares away would-be predators. <laughs> okay. It, it essentially ejects its um, guts out of yeah. its bum. Um, I think it's, it's the only way of putting it, and that is so disgusting. Um, bit that gross. The, the bit gross that the would-be predator um, <laughs> goes away. That, that's, I, I can't take this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go in. It's this sort of sticky sort of something, and yeah. you can get it on your, your two clothes and it might be sort of come onto your you know, clothing or whatever. Uh, and I think that it takes a sort of few weeks then for that to grow back. So it's not a great idea to, 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 for, to have them scared. It's a sort of last resort True. that they have. But I think that, for me, is the most, most disgusting <laughs> coral animal. Have you, you ever, know? ever? I've seen it. Oh, yes, seen it. Okay. Yes. But I, I, I haven't sort of, I haven't, because you wouldn't you want to. You didn't have the pleasure to. I didn't, I didn't, you, you, you wouldn't want to, um, to be the one who made that happen. No. Because it, 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 it is disgusting and it's quite sort of funny to talk about, but it puts a massive stress on, on, yeah. on the animal. Um, Nathan <laughs> would like to know, if you could be any animal on the reef, which one would you be? Oh, oh my God, uh, a turtle. You'd be a turtle, okay. Yeah. Why, whoa, so. Wh it's gracious, it's, it looks friendly, it's, yeah. Just, just seagrass is sort of like a vegetarian turtle or a carnivorous turtle? The vegetarian, a yeah, the seagrass. Uh, seagrass, yeah. a nice green turtle, just mooching yeah. around the seagrass meadows. All your life in the sea, yeah, in the ocean. Only the females get to on, on shore okay. to lay their eggs, but completely sea life, yeah. I mean, I think it would be quite interesting to be a coral living with a thousand versions of yourself. That so would just be, I don't think yeah. I would necessarily like it, but it would just be an interesting... I don't know, a, tha a thousand me's, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think the planet really needs a thousand me's, it does, probably doesn't need more than one me, or even one, but there we go. Um, so, um, we actually have a turtle nest here. Do we? Yeah, and some skulls of the turtles. We have three turtles here laying eggs on our island. The loggerhead, a green turtle, and a hawksbill. And yeah, they're, you can see how big they can get if you see the... So what species is that for the, the shell that we've got? Well, it's, it's damaged, so I'm not sure. I never, you can see it on the, the, the how do you call it? The card. Yeah, well, the, the, the shell. Yeah, the, the, the shell. The segments. The segments of the shell. But I never took... I never looked at this one for the, you can count the segments and see what's, what type of turtle it is. But I'm not sure. Okay, and then for here we've got the, the different shapes of the mouth so we can see sort of... Yeah, and they don't have teeth. Okay. But a very, yeah, sharp edge or something. So... Amazing. Yeah. And what they also do on Curacao, some of the turtles, they can, they can follow them. So that, that's where you've got a, a GPS tracker yeah. sort of glued to, to the turtle shell, and that helps the understanding of their they migration. They swim through the whole Caribbean. Amazing. From Miami to Curacao and back and, and forth, so they've got to have a lot of strength and force. Um, so we're going to sort of get through um, a few, few of these questions. Um, we've got, um, what career advice would you give to your 13-year-old self? And that's from Priya. Um, if I could stu study again? If yeah. I could oh, I think the same. Being a teacher, biology teacher, it's so much fun. Yeah. Okay. Because you, you have... Uh, you know about the research they do, but not only on the marine research, but, but also on medical research. And it's, th yeah, being a science biology teacher is... The best job in the yeah. world. Perfect. 
And thank you to all those science teachers who are, who are watching <laughs> for doing the job that you're doing. It's, a, it's amazing and important work. Uh, for me, I think I, it would have been great to know that you can make up your own job earlier on. That uh, if there's something you're really passionate about, True. even if it doesn't fit into those boxes they tell you about. Yeah. Um, because you didn't study no. research, science, no. uh, uh, marine research, biology or no. something. So I think that I would, like to, I would like to have been told that if there's something you're really passionate about, if you work hard and you're uh, dependable, then you can make a career, That's true. A That's career true. out of yeah. most things. Yeah. Um, Gabriel would li like to know, have you ever found a completely dead coral reef? Um, I know in uh, Curacao, the coral reefs within 20, 30 years, the past 20 years, it's reduced with 40, 50 percent. Okay. Um, so you see gaps in the coral, mm -hmm. but I've never seen a coral reef completely dead. Okay. There are all, all gaps in them, but not completely, Kay. thankfully. Um, sh I think we're just going to go back this way, because I think just yeah. to make sure we don't trip, trip over things. And also to give Ellie a rest, who's done sterling work <laughs> um, holding, yeah. holding the camera. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to the tripod area, because uh, we don't want Ellie's back to fall apart. Oh. There we go. Fantastic. We'll let you slip past there and have a, have a, have a rest. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, so we've got some questions about Curacao. Um, Oscar would like oh. to know, um, what are the main threats to corals in Curacao? Um, the, the temperature rising, mm -hmm. that's the main thing, but that's global. And locally, the, our sewer wage, waste. Okay. Because all our sewer flats into the ocean and corals are very sensitive for, for, the, for it. So you see corals dying of, uh, of our sewer waste. And that also it boosts the alg algae on the reef. Yeah, and they cover over. up and the algae cover up all the corals so they die. So Mark was saying just before that perhaps one of the best things you can do is to get more people into engineering and that kind of thing, to look at what are the solutions yeah. for, for, for our modern way of living and to do that in tune um, with nature. Um, Josh um, would like to know, are there any mitigation strategies in place in Curacao? So what, what, what are Sorry, no. mitigation, so what are people doing to help um, prevent some of these issues affecting the reef? Um. People try to uh, try uh, our tourists to, to give information to them how to treat our corals, to be not touch the corals. Uh, our local population is having information about corals. Uh, what we do here with our students, uh, we give information. Um, the government tries, as you say, tries to, to, to get a solution for our sewer waste. So people are thinking, and but you know, it's getting a bit slow. Okay. But so people are need thinking need to about to it. Okay. Just need There's to more and more awareness of the beauty of our ocean. Perfect, thank you. Um, and, and what animal is that? This is from uh, Simran. What animal is the apex predator on the coral reef in Curacao? Uh, Barracuda, uh, sharks. So uh, what kind of sharks do we get here? All kinds, the nurse shark, bull shark, um, Caribbean reef tip. Um, they say hammerheads, but I'm not sure if, if that's true. I, I've never seen one, but that's the most important, I guess. Wow. Um, and Katie would like to know why we chose to broadcast from Curacao. Well, Katie, that, that's a great question. Um, first of all, we chose to broadcast from an Atlantic, a Caribbean reef system, and that's so that we could speak to schools both in Europe um, and America during daylight hours if we were broadcasting um, from somewhere like the Great Barrier Reef. The time zones are a bit yeah. tricky, um, unfortunately. 
and then um, really Karl Marby was 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 drove our decision. Um, great um, research uh, station, really fantastic scientists working here. True. The ability to look at the um, the labs going on. So, and then what we'll be able to do um, probably by Friday is actually get a, a camera on some of the corals growing on 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 the jetty, just so we can have some live coral, um, yeah. you know, which we can cut to because that's that's what we really want to show um, is the fact that you know we're here talking about coral, but this is actually what it looks like um, because the reef I know has got a quite a sharp yeah. drop off, so it's pretty dark <laughs> dark down there. True. Uh, now I, I guess curious how we have as Karmabi is uh, the one of the, m the biggest research stations in the Caribbean yeah. about corals. So it's great, yeah. great to be yeah. here. So great science, great location, great people, great coral. What more, more, and the right time zone. <laughs> right but, time. <laughs> but, but there we go. Um, Stephen at Boulder. Poor internet sometimes. Poor internet sometimes, but we're, we're working through that. <laughs> um, Stephen at Boulder would like to know uh, what gives the color to the coral reef? It's a combination of the um, of the, the color of the corals yeah. or the well. We, we let, let, let's start off with coral. Where does yeah. coral get its color from? Because it looks pretty white. Behind yeah, us. but as you see in the pictures, where with the living corals, they can be yellow, green, orange, all all purple. Um, it's a combination of the animals itself, the yeah. the corals. Living with the algae, the green algae, and the combination of the colors give the the colors you see. Wow. Yeah. And then, so, the, but then more colors on the reef coming from other animals and plants. It's also the depth of the corals okay. with the influence of the sun shining so on the corals. So you've got the sponges with all and the colors yeah. there and the the. Um, coralline, so algae, the sort of yeah, and the the seagrass, and, and all it all, all filters through to to uh, amazing. So lots of different yeah. animals, um, and then the uh, the sunscreen chemicals that some of these animals have um, yeah. just to stop True. them getting yeah. a bit of sunburn. I could have yeah. probably done that with yesterday, um, but those give some of the amazing amazing colours that you see on the reef. And sometimes it's for animals to say look out I'm poisonous yep. or you know or to attract other animals or it's if you know the ecosystem on land or in the ocean it's amazing how, how animals are adapted to to their environment exactly um, Olivia um, would like to know are there any corals that are dangerous uh, to humans yeah we have some corals if you touch them you get blisters um, or they you, you get a rash if you touch those corals. So you're not allowed to touch corals because they die if you touch them. Um, but you also can get hurt if you touch corals. So look yeah. at them, don't see touch. the beauty, but don't touch. Uh, we've got a question for saying, can, can we actually see, see where we, we are? Um, uh, it looks, can, could we see the ocean? It looks like a beautiful day. We can, we, we will sort of like in, in the research center at the moment, but perhaps um, I think maybe for the final two um, questions, if we come around this way. Our beautiful view. Our beautiful view of the ocean. We'll open the door so you don't have to look through a sort of a, the, the glass there. But there we go. So this is um, the research station. We'll probably, if I come and stand in front, what I can do is sort of point at a few things. The dive shop, the blue building here, um, so you can get underwater. Uh, we've got the sort of netting shed, thing, that's the wet lab. Um, the sponge guys are in the office here. Uh, more admin here and a sort of dry labs behind. Education course, education <laughs> center um, behind us the ocean and jetty here. You, if you can see the boat um, by the, the second jetty, just beyond that, that's where the drop off is um, to the reef slope. Um, on, the sort of, on the sort of coming up here on the, on the shallower sort of section, sort of four, five, six meters down, you'll see quite a lot of um, branch and coral rubble. Um, so elkhorn, staghorn rubble. Um, and that all got knocked down in a, in a storm. And then the, but you will see some um, brain and maize coral on some of the big concrete platform out there. 
Uh, so we'll, what we'll do um, later, um, we'll, we'll also get some recording there done, is we'll get um, a camera on. If you see the jetty, you see the p piles going into the water, you've got brain corals and sponges and anemones growing on those. We'll be able to get those um, to you live later in the week. So hopefully that gives you a sense um, of where we are. Um, let's just, a few more questions. We've got one minute left. Oh, we've been rattling through this. We uh, oh my so God. we'll just, uh, so we will say, can- 45 minutes are over already? <gasps> yes, can dead coral, quickly. Can dead coral come to life again? That's nope. from Megan. Nope. nope. Um, Ewan would like to know what the most unique type of coral you have seen is. I think the most simple forms. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love the simple form of a coral, coral, like brain coral, like the rounded ones. Yeah. I love the most. Perfect. Uh, Sebastian uh, would like to know what the first species of coral was to be that was discovered. I don't know. We, we, no. we you know? We, no, I, I d and this discovered, I think, is a really interesting um, way of oh. looking at it. Because things that are known to science yeah. may be known to people around the world in True. different ways for, for hundreds are looking of years. For hun ex exactly, for hundreds of years already. Um, so we can't tell you what, what the first sort of classified coral was. I'm sure we can find out online who, you know, which scientist said, wrote down, this is an Idarian, this yeah. is a scientific taxonomic classification. But many communities around the world have been knowing about coral uh, for many I hundreds of years. I think it's already 200 years ago or something. Yeah. Um, so thank you so so much, Gore. Thank you very much for being thank part of Coral Live. Thank you guys for being here. And thank you very much to our audience and all the amazing questions you've sent through to us here at the Kamabi Research Station in Curaçao. It's a uh, goodbye for now. Do join us later today. We've got a live investigation. We've got another interview with Dr. Mark Vermeij. And we also have um, another Ask Me Anything today. Friday is uh, Oceans in a High CO2 World. So I hope to see you back for that. But for now, it's goodbye from Curacao. Goodbye. Thank you.